Thank you, Dan and uh, everyone. Uh, I really uh, take this honor very, very seriously. Uh, I don't, I'm not one of these people who actually goes out and seeks honors, and my wife doesn't want me to say this, but I have this view that honors are a little bit like grandchildren. Uh, they're really nice to have, they make your life sweeter, but they do remind you that you're getting older. <laughs> um, <clears throat> in accepting this award, I was asked to say a few words uh, about what has motivated me to become involved in both the Jewish community and the uh, broader general community. I'd say the first is a sense of identity. The second is a keen sense of values. And the third is an overwhelming pride in who we are and what we have achieved as a people. These are all fairly complex issues and of course they're all interwoven. Uh, it would be possible to talk for hours but I promise you I won't do that. Um, I grew up in a family that clearly identified itself as Jewish but was uh, hardly religious. Uh, in fact, my mother hated organized religion with a passion and would lecture me endlessly about how religion was probably the worst thing that had ever uh, happened to the human race, caused more wars and uh, heartache, et cetera. And as she got older, uh, sent me several letters saying, absolutely no rabbi at her funeral. Uh, my father was more comfortable with the traditions, uh, and had he married somebody else, might actually have gone to temple, but uh, he didn't. Um, he served on many boards, uh, both in the community and general community, and ultimately uh, his last big board was as chair of the 92nd Street Y in New York, a cultural organization I think all of you are familiar with. Um, so I've always thought of myself as Jewish, but uh, obviously uh, not particularly religious. Uh, as I got older, I, I realized more and more that there was a need to serve the community. Um, you know, in the words of my grandmother, if we don't take care of ourselves, who will? Uh, or as my mother used to say, charity begins at home. Um, but as one looks uh, at this question a little more deeply, um, it, you're struck by two things, or at least I am, uh, neither of which is all that obvious. Uh, the first is that as a Jewish people, we're unique in terms of our sheer survival over some like three to 4,000 years. And second, we are unique, or almost unique, in terms of our accomplishment uh, and our outstandingly disproportionate achievement relative to our numbers. Uh, there is a group called the Scots who uh, have also achieved a lot from a very small base, but that, that's a whole other subject. Um, in practically every field of human endeavor, Jews have excelled in numbers that are far beyond what would have been expected by uh, their percent of the population. Uh, just to give you an idea, we are 2% of the U.S. population and about 0.2% of the world population. And yet we have won something like 25% of all Nobel Prizes awarded since the end of the Second World War. Whether you look at CEOs of major corporations or conductors of major symphony orchestras, Jews are disproportionately represented. Let me give you some examples. Since their respective dates of inception, America's leading symphony orchestras have been led by Jewish conductors one-third of the time. Jews have earned 11% of Nobel Prizes for Literature and 20% of the Pulitzer Prizes for Nonfiction. Since the end of World War II, Jews have won 29% of all Nobel Prizes in Medicine. In Education, Jews have played leading roles in practically every field, whether it's economics, medicine, law, literature, you name it, sociology, psychology. Uh, one statistic, in 2009, three of the eight Ivy League schools were headed by Jews. 
In business, Jewish success is legendary in pretty much every industry. Uh, we have a huge representation in the garment industry and in retailing. Uh, here in San Francisco, think of Levi Strauss, The Gap, Mervyn's. In hospitality, think of Fairmont Hotels. In technology, think of Google, Intel, Oracle. In finance, our presence is uh, obviously enormous in commercial banking, investment banking, venture capital, money management, of course. All this success has allowed Jews to take a leading role in philanthropy. According to a 2004 Business Week article, some 38% of America's most philanthropic people were Jewish, a group representing only 2% of the population. So if you've got a head for numbers, you can see that you know, we're sometimes somewhere between 10 and 20 times, uh, you know, our achievements are 10 to 20 times what you would expect from uh, our numbers in the population. Now, why is that? This, this, I, I hope this isn't too conceptual, but um, I, I think there are a number of reasons. Uh, first is uh, we're a people of the book, of the Torah. Secondly, we place an enormous emphasis on a book called the Talmud, which is the history of rabbinic debates. I don't know of any other religion where debate is central to the, the, that religion's focus. We're trained in skepticism and debate and analysis rather than faith and dogma. There's a culture of study, learning, and questioning. Uh, one of my Torah classes, there's a, uh, actually a Franciscan monk who uh, attends. And in the last class, he said, I can't believe it. All you people do is argue and debate. <laughs> he said, that wouldn't be allowed in the Catholic Church. Even uh, the loyal opposition is, is squelched. He said, in the Catholic Church, it's pray, pay, and obey. And we, we would have full rebellion if anybody tried that. <laughs> I think the uh, third thing is our concept of chosenness. We have this belief that God chose us to complete his work in perfecting the world. Uh, it's a heavy responsibility, but you know, we do take it on. Uh, our purpose as a people is not to subjugate other people. It's not to force other people to behave or to believe in what we believe in. It's to perfect the world. And I, I think that goes a long way in explaining who we are. Next, I think we, we tend to view religion as history. If you read the Torah, a lot of it, or most of it, is the history of our people. And the emphasis is on life on earth, not life in some uh, post-life uh, existence in heaven. Uh, we're a people who believe in orthopraxis, which is uh, correct behavior, not orthodoxy, which is correct belief. Uh, I th next, I think uh, exile was important in shaping us. Uh, when we lost the temple in Jerusalem, that was the end of the priesthood and the beginning of the, the, the rise of uh, the, the rabbinate. Uh, rabbis are teachers, not priests. Uh, we have had to adapt to new lands and uh, you know, through debate and uh, reformation, constant reformation, uh, we've been able to survive. I also think uh, if you go back to uh, history, uh, we were not part of the feudal system. Uh, we weren't landed and we either as lords or as peasants. Uh, we were somewhere on the fringe that is involved in such horrible things as money lending, uh, trade, commerce. Uh, and as the feudal system broke down and the uh, world was industrialized, uh, guess what? Banking, trade, commerce, all became uh, extremely important and we were prepared, we were ready. Uh, our power came from our intellect, not from our ownership of land, or, you know, our position in, in society particularly. Uh, if you think about Jewish humor, other than jokes about mothers and grandmothers, 
uh, most Jewish humor has to do with either outsmarting the oppressor or outsmarting uh, somebody you're competing with. Uh, and, and I think that's very telling. Um, I also think to some extent anti-Semitism helped uh, spur us on. Uh, if somebody tells you you're not very good, uh, you're, you turn around and prove that you are, in fact, very good. And uh, it's made us uh, really quite, uh, quite determined to succeed. Um, so as I've said earlier, uh, you know, even though I've never cared much for religious observance, uh, I have, in fact, you might tell from what I just said, spent some time studying uh, religion. Uh, in fact, I joined a Torah study group that Warren Hellman started some 25 years ago. Over the years, we've studied Torah, Jewish history, the Talmud, later writings. Uh, we even studied the New Testament and the Koran, believe it or not. All of this was to gain an understanding of both our traditions from inside and in contrast to other later traditions. And so while I may not be very interested in practicing religion day to day, I've had a lifelong interest in studying it. And I tend to, to look at religion almost in the way that a uh, sociologist would, as a uh, look at religion as an engine uh, for uh, driving the development of culture. And uh, looked at that way, uh, Judaism is an enormous, enormously powerful engine. Uh, it's helped create uh, what is probably uh, the most adaptive and in many ways successful uh, religion or culture or people uh, in the world. Uh, we've survived you know, for something like 4,000 years. Uh, I would challenge anyone in this room uh, to name one Canaanite or Moabite that you know, uh, they didn't make it, and we did. Uh, yeah, as I as I said, the, our achievements as individuals and people, uh, people uh, really is something that I take great pride in. And so, uh, despite my uh, somewhat. Uh, lack of uh, observance, um, I do share our, our people's love of learning or study, debate, analysis. Uh, and I think uh, the uh, dictate to make the world a better place uh, is, is a very, very powerful one. And uh, it certainly motivated me. Uh, if you look at the, the principal tenets of, of Judaism, reverence for life, perfecting the world, treating others as we would like to be treated. These are all uh, obviously ethical principles and ethical dictates, ethical imperatives. Uh, and ethics really is the center of who we are. And ethics really is a call to, to act action. It, it's, uh, we're not talking about individual salvation here, we're talking about action who, and you know, doing doing things in this world. So when I combine these core values with the pride I have in what we've achieved, uh, that's basically why I've uh, been willing and, and actually eager to uh, spend so much time uh, serving our community and serving the broader community. So with that, uh, I'd like to thank you all again for the honor and uh, let you get on with the program.